Afternoon, guys. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. And I just came up to the hot tent this morning. We got a good snow last night. So covered up the hot tent, covered up my antenna outside. But I wanted to shoot a video today a little bit on tuning antennas and why that's important and how to kind of do that or how I accomplish it because I'm new to this ham hobby as well. You know, I've been doing this for less than a year. I have my general license now. And it's really not as easy as go get your license, grab a bow fang, and you're ready to rock and roll. I mean, you can talk on simplex fairly simply if you can get someone to talk back to you. But doing things on HF and, and trying to propagate signals and trying to get out on things like JS8 call or FT8 that are computer-based digital modes that I'm working on now, those type things take a little bit more finesse and fine-tuning of things I'm finding out as I go along. And so I thought I wanted to pass a couple things on to you guys today because everything is a learning process. And as I learn, if I teach you, then you're hearing it from someone who may be speaking more in layman terms to you than someone who's an expert at this already and may know all the ins and outs, but may not be able to break it down into a language that someone brand new to the hobby can understand. I think I can still do that. At least I can attempt to do that. So we're going to talk today a little bit about tuning an antenna. I've got a Wolf River Coils take it along antenna outside this hot tent. I've got the wood stove fired up. I've got my radio out. I've got my antenna tuner. We're going to talk about that. That's a very important piece of equipment in my mind for tuning antennas on the fly, different places to different frequencies. And we'll talk about why that's important. So let's get this hot tent fired up and get the stove going. And I'll get back with you guys. Stay with me. Okay, one of the things we want to cover early on in this video is what's called SWR, or standing wave ratio. And to explain that as simple as I can, what that is is the amount of transmission that you're putting out, the radio waves or the radio transmission coming out of your transceiver through the antenna, how much of that's actually going into the atmosphere. So an SWR of one to one means every bit of output signal is going to the atmosphere. And as that standing wave ratio goes up, you have less and less signal going from the transceiver out to the antenna. That's about the simplest way I can explain that and understand it. Now, your optimum SWR obviously is one-to-one. -one. You're very seldom going to get one-to-one -one without a tuner. If you are tuning your antenna to be resonant, that means you're trying to use the antenna on its own without any kind of electronic device to fake the radio into thinking that the antenna is better than it is. You're trying to create a resonant antenna, whether that's a long wire antenna, some kind of a coil-based antenna like I'm using today. Then you want a meter like this rig expert stick here. A rig, I think it's called a rig stick expert. Hang on a minute. Let me look at the name on this thing, guys. Excuse me for that. Rig expert stick pro. Rig expert stick pro. And this is not an inexpensive tool by any means, but it will allow you to do a lot of things on the fly with your antennas to make them more resonant. And understand that it took me a while to figure out that antennas, because your antenna is resonant at a certain frequency, does not mean that it's resonant well across the band. Generally, they're going to be resonant in a very narrow area, or you're going to get resonant, meaning you're going to get that very low SWR in a very short area of the entire band. So depending on where you want to operate, you have to create that resonance in the antenna by manipulating the antenna, either by length, or in this case with coils, by shorting out a certain amount of coils or adjusting the length or height of the collapsible antenna to the correct ratio to get you the SWR that you're looking for on that frequency. And so what I found out, and this is part of why I shot this video, is that there's lots of things on the internet that will tell you to get your to get your Rolf River coils resonant at 20 meters, you need to drop down this many coils with the shorting device. And we'll talk about that in a minute. We'll go out and look at it. And 40 meters, you need to drop it down so many more and so on and so on, depending on where you want to be resonant. However, that's true to a sense, and it gets you close. But to get resonant on the frequencies that you're operating on, you need to manipulate that more. You need something that will tell you exactly where you're at. And this tool will do that for you. Now, the ICOM 705 has a built-in SWR meter. I use that for a backup. The problem with that SWR meter is it doesn't read on the fly. Once this is plugged into the antenna, to the antenna cable, and I'll show you that in a minute, 
we can turn this on and we can actually go out and manipulate that antenna and walk back in here and see the change immediately on this meter. Where with the, uh, with the 705, we would have to run another sequence of tests across part of that band to see where we were at and kind of start over every time. We don't have to do that with this rig expert. So we're going to talk about that a lot. So now that we understand what SWR is, we understand what we're trying to achieve resonance or as close to one-to-one -one SWR as we can get. Below two is optimal. Below 1.5 is great if you can get it on an antenna. An in-fed half-wave antenna that's a certain length will give you good resonance in a certain part of the band. And so when you're making those in-fed half-wave antennas, you're only going to have resonance in a certain area of the band. So you need to decide where you want to use that antenna, whether it's voice, whether it's data, because they're at extreme differences areas in the band. And the SWR will be extremely different depending on where you're operating at in that frequency range. And that is exactly what I had to do yesterday with this Take It Along to get that figured out. I've got two settings for each band, one for voice and one for data. We'll talk about that too. Stay with me, guys. Okay, I'm pretty sure you can see this antenna sticking up out of the snow. The tripod's down here on the bottom. The radials coming out of it are down here on the bottom that are going out lengthwise into the brush. Probably... 30 feet, something like that. And then you have a series of coils on this antenna and you have a device here that you can move up and down that shorts those coils out that's connected to the bottom. So they're using a different amount of coils for the different frequencies. And then you have a vertical antenna here that's extendable, that's extended all the way for 20 and 40 meters. Now, you loosen this tightening device on the back and you can manipulate this up and down one to several coils at a time and so by doing that that gives you that resonance so let me get the ice off of this we got some ice build up on here get that off real quick move this up and down a couple of times to see where we're at here there we go now you can see on the front of this i have some marks on here i have a black line here and a red line here and the black indicates voice and the red indicates data. And you can see that they're only just a couple apart. And here at the top, you have a black mark and a red mark, and they're only a couple of coils different. So it doesn't take much of an adjustment at all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the 40 meter band, and we're going to raise this up to where our, the top of our collar is even with the black. Actually, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go a couple above the black first so that you can see what it looks like when it's wrong. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our antenna from outside, our coax, and we're going to plug it into the front of this rig expert. Okay, so we'll plug our coax right into the front of this rig expert. So now this tool is directly in line with our antenna and we're going to turn it on okay now it does lots and lots of different things we're not going to discuss all of that on this video what we're going to do is we're going to go with a single frequency all right now this is where we adjust our frequency you can see here it says 1411 1410 14 120 that is the 20 meter band so what i want to do is i want to change that to the 40 meter band so i'm going to go to zero seven now seven one hundred is in the data portion of that band. If I go to, let's just say we're gonna to go to voice. So we'll go to seven, two, seven, two, let's just say 220, that'll get us close. All right, so at seven, two, two, oh, we're showing 13 for an SWR, that's completely ridiculous. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go out there and move that coil to the correct spot and go from there and you'll see this thing move when I move the coil outside.
Okay, so we're at 1.23. Now let's talk about how we achieved that because there's something else we did on the antenna when you talk about. Okay, so on this antenna, you move this collar up and down, which there's a clip inside here, a metal clip you can see. And that metal clip inside there's touching these coils. It actually rests in between the coils. So as you're moving it up and down, you're changing the length of this antenna electrically. But by turning this, you're also changing the length because you are going this way, which creates a screw, or this way, and gets it either longer or shorter electronically as well. So once I got to about where I wanted to be, the fine tuning came from turning this collar to get down to that 1.23. Okay, so it's showing 1.30. I can live with that. That's well below two, which is, I wouldn't operate anything above two if I could help it. So 1.30, that's about right. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna verify that reading on our rig expert by using the SWR meter on our ham radio. And if we've achieved that 1.3 to one SWR, then most of our signal will be going out. That's transmitted through the antenna. Almost all of that signal will be going out into the airwaves, into the atmosphere. Okay, now let's use this ICOM 705 to verify what we did. All right, 77.220, that is in the 40 meter talking area. That's not data. Data would be down in here. You can see some strong signals down in here. You turn it up, you can hear that's data stuff there, okay? That's not the area we wanna operate in now. We wanna operate in the voice area, which is up in here. It goes up to about 300, so we went to 220. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit our menu, we're going to hit SWR, and we're going to record the SWR from 7170 to 7.270 in increments. Now watch when I key the mic. There's that 72220 that we tuned to. And now you can see it's starting to rise again when you get past that. Okay, now let's go down to the data portion of the band and do the same thing, the same experiment. See where SWR is down there compared to over here where we would transmit with voice. Menu, SWR, 7.026 to 7.126. Look at that. SWR is off the charts. At the lower end, in the center, it's still over two. Now it's going down, which it should be, because we got more resonant at that end of the band. So down in the data portion, our antenna sucks. So we have to make adjustments for that. And that's why I say, turn this down. That's why I say, you need to make two different adjustments on your antenna. Now let's talk about something else. Okay, so a couple more things I wanna talk about with you. We're gonna go out and look at that antenna in a minute because you're gonna see on that antenna that the spot I had resonant yesterday for voice, remember that's the black line, the red line was data, and we tuned it to voice, is not in the same spot today as far as where the collar is as it was yesterday on the black line. Why is that? Could be weather. Could be the fact there's snow on the ground. Could be lots of things. If we change the location of the antenna, that definitely makes a difference. And I learned all of this stuff really from Josh Noss, and I would Highly recommend if you're into, if you're getting new into ham radio, you want to learn more about it, go to Ham Radio Crash Course Facebook group page because there's lots of really knowledgeable people on there. And Josh has helped me out quite a bit through Instagram Messenger and things like that to get things tuned in and corrected to make sure that my rig is where it's supposed to be. And I'm learning small things on my own as well. But he told me that you could change very easily by location changes. He didn't tell me that it would change in weather or ground substrate conditions like the snow, but obviously it has because I had really good SWR yesterday, right at the black line today, it stunk and we had to make adjustments. That's where that antenna analyzer, that rig expert, where I put that thing, that rig expert antenna analyzer comes in as like, this is a must have tool in my opinion especially if you're gonna operate portable. And let me explain to you why. One of the things that I said to Josh yesterday when we were talking over Instagram, where they said, hey, I said, I had my antenna 
tuned in resonant at 40 meters really, really good on the talking frequencies. So when I wanted to go to voice, I just hooked my antenna tuner, my ICOM antenna tuner up to it and turned the antenna tuner on to fake the radio into thinking the antenna was resonant so that the SWR would be low. However, all that does is make the, op the radio operate correctly. It's still not sending the full signal out to the atmosphere because your SWR still is really high. The radio just thinks it's not. The problem with that is when you're operating QRP and with the 705, you're operating at five watts off the battery or 10 watts if you have it plugged into 12 volts. That's not a lot of wattage you're trying to push your signal out with. So optimizing that amount of wattage going out is key. And by running an antenna tuner in between those two and faking the radio out to think it's resonant, you're losing output power that could be putting signal into the atmosphere. So tuning that antenna becomes that much more critically important for low wattage radios. Now, here's what I wanted you to see. There's our black line for 40 meters from yesterday. And our red line's over here. You can't see it. it's off to one side. But we have dropped that thing five or six coils and then adjusted it fine tuning wise to get to the SWR we needed today compared to yesterday. And the only real difference is atmospheric conditions and ground substrate with this six or eight inches of snow on the ground. So that's important to understand, I think, as well. And if I'm wrong about any of this, please tell me. Now, so we talked about this pack the other day, the video I did last week. And that rig expert sits right there at the top of that pack, right where my microphone lays. And I consider that one of the most important tools in this radio pack. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you joining me today for this video. Just a real quick talk on the importance of an antenna analyzer and the importance of having a resonant antenna in the area of the band you intend to operate on. Again, I'm new to this ham radio stuff, but as I learn things that I think are very important for new hams to understand, I want to try to pass those on to you. So I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.